Hey there, this is Janina Polito and welcome to What Is Life Wednesday. I am super excited to have you here with me today. And remember, this is all about tips, thoughts, and encouragement from multi-passionate life while managing chronic illness and mental health. So it's that wonderful little intersection between um, all the everyday work you're doing, um, all the career stuff you're doing, um, all of the plans and ambitions you have, and then all of the different kinds of things that get in the way of that. And particularly talking about things with chronic illness, with talking about things with mental health. And um, I'm personally of the belief that we all have those days when our mental health isn't great, when our physical body isn't great. And it's important to know how to flow with that, how to work around that, and um, how to keep going in the best way for you. <laughs> And just FYI, I am Janina Bolito. Again, I am the CEO of Uncommon Universes Press. I've written over 20 books. I have worked as an editor and marketing strategist for many authors. I did eight years as a teacher with adult business school with uh, everything from third grade to high school English. So I have done a lot while also managing mental health and chronic illness and all of those things. So I am really passionate about sharing all of this with you and hopefully just making your day a bit better, a bit brighter, a little bit more encouraged and to give you that little extra um, bit of ideas and insights that maybe you haven't thought of before. And if you haven't already, I would absolutely love it if you subscribed to this channel, you will get uh, fun writing tips, you'll get more of these What Is Life Wednesday uh, videos. You will also sometimes get my three random questions book features. So if that all sounds like fun to you, and if it's something that you want to make sure that you never miss an episode of, please do hit the subscribe button. Thanks. Now, last week we were talking all about when you should start a new routine, uh, talking about how you know when it's the right time to start a routine, and when um, you know that you're going to have the right support structure to start a new routine. So that was all about last week. It was all about the routines, as I mentioned on my Instagram recently. Maybe routine just sounds kind of blah. So you want to use the word framework or you want to use the word system or something else. It's all about just ways of getting yourself organized and taking those next steps more easily. Now, this week <laughs> is about when you should not start a new routine. And I'm going to have a few caveats here because in general, I do think having a routine, having a framework, having a template is going to make your life easier and better, even if you only do it in the smallest, smallest, smallest possible ways. Bottom line is the idea of having a routine is just to give you a kind of structure. And I'll use an example. Yesterday, I had a really, really bad headache for a number of reasons. I had a challenging therapy appointment that was very good, <laughs> but also challenging. And then I, of course I had to get some work done afterwards and I had to do some things that involved going into stores. And for me, um, I can get really easily overloaded when I do too much shopping at once. I have a sensory processing disorder. So Walmart on a day when I'm exhausted, on a day when I've had a rough therapy appointment and when I'm trying to adjust the daylight savings time, Walmart is like sensory chaos <laughs> for me. So all of that combined to have a pretty uh, intense headache. And I knew I was going to have to go to bed earlier and I was taking medicine for it and everything, but also what kind of kept me going and getting a few more things done that I wanted to get done was having a routine, was saying, okay, Thank God <laughs> I have a routine and a system for getting a post done. Thank God that I have um, a whole set of templates to create content. So am I going to have an incredibly productive evening? No, I'm not. <laughs> but I can get a few little things done before I have to call it a night, go to bed early, and hopefully just sleep this off and <laughs> see how I wake up in the morning. So when I talk about routines and templates, it's not as someone who is this super person who has everything all together and like wakes up insta perfect. It's as someone who uses them as a scaffold on times when I can't make it through anywhere else. 
And in part, I think I learned this as a teacher because if anyone out there has been a teacher, you know, you go to class and you teach sometimes when you have a headache, when you are in pain, when, you know, things are difficult, when one of the students maybe isn't behaving themselves or the whole classroom is just having a day of chaos. You know, maybe Halloween just happened and everyone got into the Halloween candy. And so you're having to try to get through the school day and hopefully educate and enlighten young minds when things are not ideal. And so when you're prepared, when you have plans, when you have worksheets for days that aren't going so well, when you have that extra scaffolding, it helps to get through some of the harder days. And of course, there's some times when you just have to throw it all away and just try something new or different or just say, you know what, we're going to try this again tomorrow. And that is completely fine. And, it, and that's what we're going to be talking about today when you shouldn't do those new routines. But I hopefully, I want you to think about routines as a scaffold. These aren't things that some perfect person does who has their life figured out and their hair is always like super, super like shiny and curled and, you know, they have those, you know, brightly saturated pictures everywhere. This isn't about, you know, having everything perfect. It's about giving you the, that scaffolding for those days when it's not, for those days when it is and everything in between. It just gives you a pattern and a rhythm. So I hopefully... Uh, you will see that when you're thinking about routines and that will kind of help your perceptions of it a bit. It's not about being a perfectly organized person. It's about giving yourself a little bit of a, a scaffold, a little bit of an extra help on those days when everything is just really hard. Now let's talk about those times when you really just shouldn't start a new routine. One of those times is when your life is in a great season of upheaval. So maybe uh, you're about to have a baby or you've just had a baby. Well, that is a huge upheaval. Your routines are all going to be changed. Um, a lot of the, your routines are going to revolve around when the child <laughs> needs to be fed and taken care of or the children if you have twins or multiples. That is not a time to try to start a whole new routine for yourself, especially one that's complex. You're just not going to be able to uh, maintain it in the way that you want. And it's going to be very easy to get discouraged. Another time I can think that you would not want to start a new routine is maybe when you're moving. And the more complex and the bigger the move, the more that you shouldn't be trying to like create like a five to seven step process. You might have a whole routine that involves you having a certain time where you sit at the table and have a little bit of quiet time. It's really hard sometimes to get into that place when your house is complete chaos <laughs> and everything's being packed up. So go easy on yourself when you're thinking about starting like new elaborate routines when your life is in upheaval and when it's in a place where you don't have much control over what that upheaval even looks like. Now that doesn't mean that you don't try to have any kind of routine. Again, I'm very much a fan of templates even when life is hard, but if you are going to try something to make it very, very simple, <laughs> like two or three steps. So maybe you have a certain pattern in how you're going to put everything away when you are, you know, raising a newborn. Maybe you're going to have a certain specific place that you put all of their items you need to take care of them. Something like that. Or when you're moving, maybe you're still going to set aside a little bit of quiet time in the morning. Maybe it's not going to be as elaborate as it would normally be because you don't know where anything is. But maybe you're still going to set aside a little time to have a cup of coffee, to uh, read a little bit, to pray, to have a little bit of a breather, to journal a little bit. Routines still have a lot of value even when life is in upheaval. It's a reason why even when you travel all over the world, if you can develop some kind of routine when you're traveling, it can help you to be stabilized even across different time zones. So. You know, whenever possible, try to keep to a routine, but at the same time, sometimes you just have to let everything go <laughs> or make things be a lot simpler when you're in that place of upheaval. Another time when it can be really difficult to maintain a routine is when you're in some kind of a mental health crash or mental or physical health crash or crisis. So you may have a routine where you wake up, wake up at a certain time, but when you're in the middle of some kind of a health flare or crash, 
it's going to be more difficult to keep to that. And if at all possible, if you can sleep in, you should sleep in. Your body is telling you that you need to rest. The same thing if you're sick in general, mentally or physically, your body is saying we need to rest. This may not be the time to keep up your vigorous routines, templates, etc. cetera. Uh, even last night when I was just exhausted, I have a, a whole like planned routine before bed and a couple things I just left off the list because <laughs> I said, I just need to go to sleep. Um, so that's when you might need to bend or break or just let go of that routine for that day, uh, for those times of life. And if you find that you just can't keep to that routine for a longer period of time, then maybe you need to let, need to let that go. Maybe you need to simplify your routine. Simplification is a wonderful thing. And I always get concerned when people say, yeah, I have a 10 step routine and I'm going, oh, that's going to be really hard <laughs> to maintain throughout the chaos of life. Can we make it smaller? So think about that when you're considering routines. Two other reasons why it may not be a great idea to start a routine right now are number one, you don't have a good motivation to do it. So I was trying to get up earlier, but without a good motivation, <laughs> it was not happening. It was way too easy to roll over and say, you know what, I am self-employed. Yes, I have deadlines. I know when they are, I can sleep another hour and still meet them. So in that case, if you don't have a good motivation, a good inner sense of why you're benefiting from this or, some, or in some way that it's going to refresh you or that it's important, it's going to be hard to keep that routine. And I think we overlook this because people think, well, but I know that it's good to do this because so-and-so says that it's good to do this. And so I should do it. Someone else's motivation is not guaranteed to work for you. Someone else's reasons are not guaranteed to work for you. And so sometimes when I see people fail to implement new routines or processes or templates or strategies, it's because they try deep down inside they try to adapt to someone else's motivations or reasons for doing something and that doesn't work with <laughs> our unique psychology it just doesn't so consider that uh, sometimes when you're trying to start a new routine and it fails that might be a reason and this just might not be a time to even start that new routine to begin with until you can dive deeper and figure out a good reason why it works for you or why it's important to you Along with that, we spoke in the last video about the importance of having a support network. If you don't have a support network of any kind, at a certain point, it's going to be tricky to get take on too many routines. Sometimes when you're thinking about routines, make sure that you always think about them in context of who you can get around you to be supportive and who really understands why you're doing this and why it's important. And if you don't have that support network, I would hesitate to take on too many new routines. Maybe try one, maybe two. And I know some of y'all are like, well, I'm very internally motivated, so I can just take on a million. Even if you're internally motivated, after a while, it just becomes kind of a slog and it becomes kind of difficult. So having a good community and support network is important. And if you don't have that, it can be really challenging to start up a new routine. So in wrapping up all of this, some of the reasons why you may not want to start a new routine at this time in your life are your life is in incredible amounts of upheaval where it um, might be a new life change of moving or a new addition to the family or losing a member of your family or anything like that, that's going to be really, really challenging when you have to try to create new routines. Now you're going to have to make new routines as a default, but trying to like idealistically make this glowing, perfect, shiny routine, that's not the time to do it. Not when you're in survival mode. Also when you're dealing with a major mental or physical health crash <laughs> or flare, not a great time to start a routine then. In addition, when you don't have a great reason to motivate yourself that works with your unique brain chemistry, I mean, when you don't have any kind of a support system whatsoever, those are two indicators that it may not be a great idea to start a new routine, a new habit, um, create a new template for your life right now. You may need to wait until you can sort through those things more. But regardless, again, I am, a, I am a huge fan of these because they do help when life gets hard. They do help when things get challenging. It gives you a scaffold as you're continuing on in your life. So when you can try to add new routines and new habits, I do recommend that you give it a shot anyway.
And that's speaking as someone who uses these and sometimes has to ditch them and sometimes life changes <laughs> and you have to change with it. But it's always worth going back and giving it another shot regardless. Now, next week is going to be a special focused edition talking to all of my authors out there who are looking at their next books. We are going to dive into writing routines in particular and using templates, outlines, writing routines, all of those things when you're trying to create um, books, whether fiction or nonfiction. So it's going to be a special uh, focused episode on that because again, my background is both in publishing um, as an author, editor, uh, publishing house president, and also as a teacher for eight years who helped many, many students <laughs> get their brains into the mode of writing. And so I come from that angle as well. And if this was a helpful video to you, please do subscribe, please share it. So if you clicked through to this video from something on social media, you can go ahead and share that social media post and just pass along the encouragement and tips to someone else that you think might enjoy it. And this is Janina Polito. Thank you so much for watching. Now go forth and be awesome. Thank <laughs> you.